Welcome to the channel folks. If this is your first time here and you want to become a Technivore, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can be updated every time we release a new video. This is the second slicer I've looked at this week and I have used this before. This is Creality Slicer and this is the version that came with my Ender 3 V2. So if you want to get good prints from a printer, maybe try the software they sent with the printer. That's kind of a good way to see if you can figure out what you're doing. Um, this is exactly a port of Kira. It is nothing super special. It is pretty much the exact same settings that you get from Kira 4.2. Kira is now on version 4.7.1, so there are a few things that Kira has that this version of Creality Slicer does not. But when you open this slicer, it will offer you the chance to download the latest version of Kira. And I highly encourage you to do that because you will find a lot more information on Kira. And this is basically the same thing with some graphic labels on it. So that being said, I will show you how to use this software just like we use Kira. It's pretty simple. All you're going to do is drag and drop a STL in here. Let's see if I have one somewhere nearby. 3D printer models, there's probably some in there. Let's grab this battery holder. This is just a simple AAA battery slot. I use it to put into other models to maintain the shape and size that I need in order to put my springs and wires in there to get a power source from two AA, AAA batteries, excuse me. Oh no, it is AA, this is the AA version. Um, so basically, one of the more important things to note when using a slicer is this is a box shape. This is how it imported. This is obviously not the best way to print this. And the reason why is because you get these red areas. These are known as overhangs and you will need support to print those. You can print it like this and you can print it with support that will build up and hold that so it makes the shape that we want it to but it's gonna waste a lot of plastic. So if there's a better orientation that doesn't require support, generally it's best to use that orientation. So let's take a look at the rotate option. And I'm gonna click lay flat. And I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees here. Now it can print straight up. There's no red spots and it can print the whole model without any support, which means I'm only gonna use the plastic of the model. That red spot's where it attaches to the bed, so it's not technically an overhang. There's, the bed is supporting it there. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is that if you do update to Kira, you will get a couple of upgrades to this interface right here. There are now arrows on the intersections of these axes that you can click to automatically rotate at 90 degrees in any direction, which is nice. And there's also a button here that is lay face to build plate. So I can click that and click any face and it will make that, that face the bottom and lay it flat, which is good for rearranging models as well. Um, we don't really need to change the size, but if you would like to move the model, you can either click and drag or you can go to move and you can enter hard coordinates here and it'll move. Uh, for scale, it is set to uniform scaling, so if I make one side bigger, it will make all three sides bigger at the same ratio. I can turn that off with a click here, and I don't really need to. I'm gonna go back to my original scale, and then there are some other options in here. If I wanted to flip it, and say I only had one flange, and I wanted to flip it so the flange printed on the other side, that's what the mirror button's for. You can kind of tell because these are slightly not, not the same size when I rotate it back and forth. Then there are some per model settings. Now you can adjust certain things in here um, to either print as support or not as support, things like that. We're not going to mess with those. Those are a little bit more advanced than just a starter video. So let's jump over to the main things you need to know here. So if you're printing PLA, this is going to be a pretty standard profile for you. We are looking at 0.2 millimeter layer height. And I like to take that down to 0.16. It takes a little bit longer to print, but you get a finer print. The rest of that stuff you can leave as it is. And 
infill density is a little high, but that's okay. Our printing temperature. Now this should be noted on your spool of plastic. You should be able to see somewhere on there it says a recommended temperature. If not, it's probably on the box the spool came in. Generally with PLA, you're going to be in the 200 degree range. Um, higher temperatures do read, lead to higher liquidity. Uh, they flow a little bit better, but it is also, I mean, you don't want to go too high because if it's too hot when it comes out of the nozzle, the fan can't cool it enough before it makes its next pass, and this can lead to blobbing and droopage and things like that. So you really want to find the proper temperature for the filament you're using. I recommend starting at 205 and either turning it up or down by about 5 degrees. This is set at 210, which is fine for a default profile. So we're pretty much just going to leave it at that. Uh, all four of these first five settings are at the same temperature, which is what we want. The build plate, I'm on an Ender 3, and with PLA, I really don't need mine above, well, I really don't need it turned on, to be honest. I do set it to about 45 degrees, and that works well. Depending on what your build surface is and how well your adhesion is working for you, you may want to turn that up. If you're not getting good adhesion, go ahead and turn it to 55 or 60. I just don't really need to. Um, retraction is a setting that you're going to want. This is basically when it gets to a corner, instead of dragging and stringing out filament, it pulls the filament back up into the nozzle or retracts it. And you don't want that to be too high of a number or it can pull molten filament into the line and you really don't want that because it can create clogs. But you, uh, for the Ender 3, anywhere between five and six and a half is pretty good. Um, six and a half is pretty standard for PLA. I don't know why they have it set to five here, but it, it would be all right. Um, I did turn it, maybe they were print. I do turn it down to about four for ABS, so it kind of depends. Um, print speed is a little bit on the low side for an Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2. It's at 50. We can leave it there for now, uh, but I can tell you once your machine is tuned and you have everything tightened, you can go up to about 75 without any sort of vibrational ringing or defects in the model. So um, it can go a lot faster than it's set to here. For PLA, you do want print cooling turned on. That's your part cooling fan that blows on the part as it prints. And that is because it helps keep form and it hel helps keep those, like I said, those layers don't, you don't want to add too much heat at a time because they can start to droop and stuff like that. So uh, we are not going to generate support for this model. If you have any of those nasty red overhangs that we looked at, you're going to want to generate support, but I don't really need it, so I'm not going to use it. Um, PLA doesn't really need a draft shield. I do generally turn on bridge settings even though we're not doing any bridging in this model and before I slice it let's just click on the model and click center selected model. Um, there are other options in here as well if you want to multiply selected model I can add two copies and there will now be three of them and let's hit the slice button. Slice pretty quickly it's two hours and 47 minutes we can go ahead and preview the path and as you can see here this is exactly how it's going to print it and I can scroll down through the layers and I can scroll back and forth through the layers so you can see the order that it's going to print in and exactly what lines it's going to use to print that layer of the model which is pretty cool um, if I wanted to print this I could hit save and move the file to my printer and hit print I don't really need to this was just kind of an example of how Creality Slicer works and yeah, definitely use it. It's great. It's fun. If it came with your software and you're not hooked up to the internet, it's going to be a great option for you. Although, after you play around with it for a little while, go ahead and update to the newest version of Kira. Because that's going to allow you some functionality that you don't have in Creality Slicer 4.2. Now, eventually they will update this again, and it will have the more stable features from the newer versions of Kira. But... If you can get a hold of those now, especially those rotation, yeah, I didn't realize how much I had come to appreciate those in Kira um, until I didn't have them playing with Creality Slicer. So, um, yeah, great slicer all in all, but either way, as you're practicing with it, you're learning Kira. It is the exact same setup. The only difference in Kira is those more advanced features, and it says Kira right here instead of Creality. There's a Kira icon and it's like not this color up top but that's just a theme thing you can change the theme and it changes all the colors i actually have some custom themes that would work for this just as well as they work for kira so 
that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this look at Creality Slicer and you're having fun looking around, enjoy it. It's it's great. It's going to be a great training thing for showing you how to use Kira because eventually I'm going to recommend you make the switch. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit... 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.